right, all right. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. This is the day the Lord has made and let us rejoice and be glad in it. Good morning to you, St. John Baptist Church. It's good to be in the house of the Lord one more time. And it's good to be in your presence, even though again, you're not here with me on this Sunday morning. We are in each other presence and it's just good to be uh, with you on this Sunday morning to, to bless the name of the Lord, to give God the very highest praise. And if I were you right there where you are at home, I would give God a praise on this Sunday morning. If God woke you up and started you on your way, if you still standing tall, if you still have joy, if you still have real faith in God, you ought to give God praise on this Sunday morning because God has been truly good to us. And we are so grateful unto God for how he keep his arms around us. Even, even now, God is blessing us. Amen. Let me just share and, and remind some of our leaders I mentioned on Wednesday night that uh, we're going to have a meeting here on Thursday at six o'clock. And so that meeting is to just get uh, some of our leaders together uh, uh, so that we can uh, begin to uh, uh, talk about returning to church, returning to church. And so we can't just run back in here. We're going to have to plan and strategize and think about what we're doing. We want to make sure things are safe uh, for our members and our guests who will come to worship with us. And so that begins on Thursday. We'll be getting together to begin that conversation together about returning to church. And so I hope you're able to make it. We'll have that meeting. We'll do it here uh, in the sanctuary so we can have safe distancing. So we don't have to worry about, about that. And so hope you can, you can come and be with us on Thursday at six. Amen. Amen. I want us to, to look at a word uh, together uh, this Sunday morning uh, from the Lord. It is found in Exodus. It's found in Exodus chapter 40. Exodus chapter 40. If you have your Bibles and your smart devices, uh, we want to call your attention to Exodus chapter 40, beginning at verse 34. Exodus chapter 40, uh, beginning at verse 34 is what we want to look at on this Sunday morning. I'm using the NIV Bible. And so uh, as you read along with me, verse 34, it says, then the cloud covered the tent of meeting. It says, the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. Moses could not enter the tent of meetings because the cloud had settled upon it and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. And all the travels of the Israelites, whenever the cloud lifted from above the tabernacle, they would set out. But if the cloud did not lift, they did not set out until the day it lifted. So the cloud of the Lord was over the tabernacle by day, and the fire was in the cloud by night, in the sight of all the house of Israel doing all their travels. Amen. God, how we love you, how we praise you, how we bless your marvelous name, how we give you praise and glory and honor, oh God, it all belongs to you. How we thank you for Jesus Christ, your son and our savior, and how we ask you, God, in Jesus' name to forgive us on this Sunday morning. Forgive us, God, of all of our sins. We pray, God, that you would cleanse us through and through. We pray, God, that nothing would hinder us this Sunday morning from spending time with you, from worshiping you in spirit and in truth. We thank you, God, again, for the precious blood of Jesus Christ that brought our redemption, that atoned us, that set us free. God, we ask you, God, to guide us in our time together by your spirit. You would fill us with your spirit as we preach your word. We pray, God, your word will go forward on this Sunday morning with clarity, with simplicity, and yet with power, for it's in Jesus' name we pray, and we do thank you, and the church say, amen, amen. The Bible says, then the cloud 
covered the tent of meetings and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. I want to lift from the text, the cloud of the Lord and Corona. The cloud of the Lord and Corona. I want to talk about that for a few minutes with you on this Sunday morning. I have, I have been blessed and I praise God and I thank God that he has given me the presence of mind to remind me that the Lord, that the Lord is and has been an enduring help for us during this Corona season, the season of, of unrest. We're in a season of unrest, but I want you to know that our God, that the Lord has been uh, an enduring help for us. And if you just, if you can just think about that this Sunday morning and, and just think about all the things you have heard, the things you have seen, and the things you have watched, uh, and all of the horror and the bad news, we've also seen some, some good news. We have seen some unbelievable praise moments. And so to remind us of our God and his enduring help, that God has been an enduring help for us in this season. I want you to re be reminded this Sunday morning to remember afresh that God is with us in sickness and in death, that God is with us in the good times as well as the bad times. I want you to remember that in this season that we're in that, that our God, he, he's an enduring presence and God is with us, not just in good times, moments of high praise and hallelujah, but God is also present. He's also helping us get through the moments, the times that, 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 that we don't feel like we can make it, uh, 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 the times that, that we just get up from the dinner table, probably shaking our heads, wondering about our future. I want you to know that this text in front of us on this Sunday morning is teaching us something about the enduring presence of God, that he is an enduring help for his people. We have God in this pandemic as, as what I would call the, 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 the infinite divine covering of God. We have, we have God's divine covering in this season. I want you to know that, remember that afresh on this Sunday morning, that, that we have this, this, this infinite uh, uh, divine covering of God over his folk and, 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 I, and over this world. I still believe that God has the world in his hand. I still believe that the whole world is in the hand of God. And so the idea that it's an infinite divine covering we have with God, it lets me know that God's covering over my life and over your life is unending, it's, it's without end. And I'm so glad that God's protection for me is not based on my faith all the time because you know and I know there are times when life put pressure, amen, put a strain on our faith and we're not as faithful as we ought to be. We are not as willing to go with God as we should. And even in those moments, because God is faithful, because God is faithful, amen, God continues what? to cover us and to keep us. I'm wondering, I think that is what the Psalm writer had in mind when he said, even though I walk, he says, even though I walk through the valley of a shadow of death. I think y'all familiar with Psalms 23. He says, he says, even though, even though I walk, he says, through a valley of a shadow of shadow of death. Now, the idea here is that there are days, there are times in our lives uh, uh, that we might have to go through a valley or walk through this valley that the Psalms is talking about that he calls a valley and it's a shadow of death. Amen. In other words, uh, 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 it's present. It's present. It, it is uh, uh, the shadow is of death is in the valley. You know, it's not, he didn't say it was his shadow. 
He says it's the shadow of death. And, and, and so and so one thing that this pandemic have kind of shook me sometimes is when I hear uh, the reports, you know, at the end of the day, uh, uh, at noonday, there's a report about how things are going. Hey, man, in this pandemic and and in New York, for instance, there are 300 and some people dying every day. I mean, that is shocking to hear that 300 people is dying every day uh, because of this virus. And so it shakes you to your core. But then you have the Psalms 23 to remind us that even though we, we feel like we are surrounded, amen, and being overrun and overtaken, amen, by death, uh, the Psalms writer says, that, that, that the Lord is with us. The Lord is with us. Even though we are, we are in sometime this, this, this moment or, or, or we have these feelings where, where, where we think we're not going to make it. And the Bible reminds us that in that moment, in that moment, we have the Lord who is with us. The Lord is with us. The Lord is the one who will keep us. So when we look at the text in front of us this morning, this text is reminding us of just how did the children of Israel, how did they function? You know, how did they, how did they make it uh, uh, when they left Egypt? That's what this Exodus text is all about. How did they function when they left Egypt? You know, uh, 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 the Bible tells us that after, after Moses had followed all of God's instructions uh, about building this tent of meetings or this tabernacle, which is where the ark of the Lord, you know, was placed. Uh, uh, when he had finished building this tabernacle for the Lord, the Bible says, then God showed up. It's almost like what happened when Solomon finished building his temple uh, some 400 plus years later. Uh, uh, the Lord shows up uh, 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 to talk to Solomon about how things are going to go at the temple. Here he is. He just finished uh, building this tent of meetings. And, and, and the Bible said that, that Moses had completed or Moses had finished everything that God commanded him to do. Amen. He had finished. Uh, uh, he had completed everything God commanded him to do with the tabernacle. And I want, I, I keep saying that, I'm repeating that because, because I don't want us to get too lazy in this season. Y'all, y'all sitting at home a lot this season. You're not, you're not in church. And so, and so the enemy could really be sitting y'all up. He could be really uh, 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 zapping you of, 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 of real, real genuine, yeah, faith and discipleship, you know, real, fellowship of God and 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 that involves you and I being obedient to God it involves you and I doing exactly what God commands us to do all right it, it means we have to do whatever God word says concerning us and especially in this season amen that 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 when the church come back uh, 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 when we get together again we got to come back with a greater determination, amen, and, 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 and be more willing to want to do whatever God command us to do, to want to finish the work of the Lord. That, that's, that's how you want to come back. You want to come back on fire. And so he finishes this tabernacle. And when he finishes the tabernacle, here comes verse 34 to verse 38. Uh, the Bible says in verse 34 and 35, it says, Then the cloud covered the tent of meetings, and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. And the Bible says Moses could not enter the tent of meetings because the cloud had settled upon it, and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. Okay, okay, here, here, here it is. Here's what I want you to get out of this thing. Is that we see the greatest or the greater presence of God than Corona. When I was looking at this verse, I was thinking about again the season that we're in, and 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 everywhere we we go, you know, you can't leave your house. 
Uh, now we're wearing masks everywhere we go. Uh, 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 places have opened, but they're only at 25% uh, capacity. Uh, you're still doing curbside pickups. Uh, we, we see the evidence, or uh, we see the presence of the coronavirus everywhere. You can't wake up no day and not be reminded of the times, the season that we're in. And if you're not careful, you forget that God has a greater presence than Corona. It's almost like what Paul says in Romans when he says, he talks about how, how present sin is in the world. He says where, where sin abound, he says the grace of God did much more abound. And so what Paul is telling us, yes, there's a lot of sin in the world. It's everywhere. He said, but there's more grace. That there, there, There's more grace from God present to help us overcome sin. I see that in this text where, where, where even though uh, 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 we are, you know, surrounded and almost overtaken by this virus, this text lets me know that, 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 that there's a greater presence of God in the world than this virus. And that's what the church got to remember to preach that and teach that. Yes, it looks pretty bad, but there's a greater presence of God's glory, you know, in the world. Look, the text says that, that the cloud covered the tent of meetings. Now, the tent of meetings, you're wondering, what is that? The tent of meetings was a portable, uh, uh, earthly dwelling place. That's a good way to define it. It was, it was a portable, uh, earthly dwelling place for God. Uh, uh, this is where you get the Hebrew word Shekinah, Shekinah glory. Shekinah means dwelling of God. And so, and so, and so here he is in this text where, where we see this, this, this greater presence of God, this, this cloud covers this tent. The tent is where the ark of the Lord. So, 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 so the Israelites, uh, 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 the way they made it out of Egypt and the way they're going to make it through the wilderness is that they got to remember that they have God with them. Are you with me? God is with them. Yes, they in a wilderness. Yes, it's going to be some good days and some bad days. Yes, yeah, it's going to be difficult times ahead, but we're going to make it because there's a greater presence of God with them in the wilderness. And so, and so here he is. He covers uh, the tent of meeting. So it means, I mean, God is there. He, he, he says he, he covers it. He says, and then the glory of the Lord fill this place. All right. God covers it. And then his glory, his glory fills the tabernacle. And then the Bible says it's to the point that, that Moses couldn't enter. Huh? There's so much presence of God. There's so much glory of God. Boy, I sure wish churches like that when we get back together in church, that there's such a great presence of God's glory that, that, it, that it cover the church houses across the land and that the church is filled on the inside with the glory of God. There was such a great presence of God in this tent of meetings in the tabernacle, the Bible said that Moses couldn't get in. I, I was reading, I was reading more Exodus when I was wondering about what's going on in this text. And I was reminded that there was a time when God would come down and that God would, would cover the, the tent of meetings, the tabernacle, but Moses would be on the inside of the tent and God would cover the tent. But in this text, you might have caught that thing, that, that, that God not only covers the, 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 the tabernacle, he not only covers the tent of meetings, but, but, but the Bible says that he filled the tabernacle with his glory where Moses couldn't get in. So now we got God on the inside, we got Moses on the outside. Uh, 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 watch, watch this. God, look, God completely covers 
and fills every space. Now, we know that there's no building uh, uh, that we can build uh, that can contain God, all right? There's no house of worship that can contain God. There's no building uh, that can be built that can contain our God. And that's what this text is showing you and I, that, that his glory, it covers, it is settled on the temple and it filled this tabernacle and to the point that, that, that God is all over that thing. And, and he could not get in. There's a, greater, there's a greater presence of God than this coronavirus. And when you understand what I'm preaching to you this morning, you will have a whole different attitude about how we function in this season. Amen. You might be able to pop your collar when you understand that God is, look, God is not only present, but God is going to be the one that take us through this pandemic. God is going to be the one that is holding us up in this moment. Moses couldn't get into place. God is on the, he's on the inside and God is on the outside. Uh, uh, here's another thing that, that I need to say about this text before I leave it. Uh, uh, and it's because of where we find ourselves. Uh, 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 the text says that, 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 that the, the tent of meeting, uh, this tabernacle, if you know, why, it's a place. It's a place where God dwells. Stay with me now. It's a place. This, this Bible verse is teaching us that, 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 that the Israelites, uh, uh, they made it through the wilderness because God, yes, he was among them. He dwelt among them, but they had a place that, that when they had some rough days in the wilderness, uh, 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 they, they had a place, they had somewhere that they can look to. Uh, uh, they, they, had a, they had a place, they had a rendezvous. They had a place where they can go and, 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 and spend time or, or seek God's face. Uh, we're in a season uh, uh, right now where, where because we're live streaming church and and, and we zoom in and, 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 and we doing Bible study. Everything is on camera and, and y'all just sitting at the house chilling. Uh, I heard a preacher uh, uh, the other day was talking about God is ushering in a new thing and, and that, that a lot of y'all not coming back to church and, 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 and that y'all gonna want church, amen, live stream to y'all. Well, if that's happening, if God is doing that, the Bible got to change. Because, because the, as I understand the Bible, the Bible says that, that heaven and earth will pass away, but, but it says, but his word will never change. And so there's no scripture that I've read where, where God don't require people of faith to, to assemble themselves. Matter of fact, I was reading this morning in Psalms 149, it talks about the saints assembling themselves together. You can't do that this morning at the house, at the coffee table, or sitting on your bedside, or sitting in your family room. That ain't the saints, that's just you and your family. But in Psalms 49, it said, the saints are to assemble themselves together. And then in Psalms 150, it talks about us praising God, not in your den. It says, in the sanctuary of the Lord. And so, and so, and so, okay, here's something, it's just something about leaving, leaving our space and, and coming to a place where God promised to meet us. And what I hope, I hope that we are missing the assembly together. I hope we are missing fellowship in church to the point that we can't wait until stuff is lifted so we can come back to church and praise God. The Bible says that, that there was a great glory, a cloud of God that settled on this tent of meetings and that the Spirit of God filled the tabernacle to the point that Moses, he couldn't get in. Boy, that shouting stuff, y'all, that, that, that we, have, we have this greater presence of God with us to see us through this pandemic. Oh, that's a shout. That, that, that encouraged me this week when I was reading this text and wondering, should I stay with this text? 
uh, uh, that thing just, I, the more I thought about the text and thought about where we are, that, that I got strength in knowing that, that it's just not a little bit of God that's around me. There's a whole lot of God that's around us in this moment, in this moment. I want you to know there's a lot of God all around you. Here's another thing I want to point out to us in this text. It talks about us trusting God's guidance in a pandemic. Not only we have him a great presence, but then this text talks about how the Israelites had to trust the guidance of God through the wilderness. Now we know, yes, they had their moments, they whined a lot, and to the point that all of them didn't make it to the promised land, that, that those who were uh, 20, I believe, and younger, uh, are the ones who actually made it into the promised land and those who were 20 and older didn't get to go because they whined all the time. But even though God had to, had to, had to pass such judgment on them, God still kept his promise to bring the Israelites into the promised land. And so, and so though they had to trust God's guidance, all right, uh, and, and we have to trust his guidance while we are dealing with, while we are going through this season, this, this pandemic. We got to trust God's guidance. Now you're wondering, preacher, where is that at in the text? Where is that at, preacher? Okay, I thought you would ask me that. And so here it is for you, all right? Look at verse 36 and verse 37. It says, in all the travels of the Israelites, Whenever the cloud lifted from above the tabernacle, they would step out. Whenever the cloud lifted from above the tabernacle, they would step out. Then the Bible says, but, look though, but, if, but if the cloud didn't do that, if, 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 if the cloud, but if the cloud did not lift, they did not set out until the day what? It was lifted. Watch this. They, they are trusting, they are trusting God's guidance, and you need to trust his guidance in this pandemic. That that it says in all of their travels, not some of their travels, and all of their travels in the wilderness, they did not make any moves until God, look, until he lifted, until the glory of God. The cloud of the Lord was lifted, amen, was lifted off of the top of the tent of meetings. Whenever, whenever God was lifted off of the tent of meetings, they knew that it was time to move forward, to press ahead, and that God was going to guide them, and that God was going to watch over them in their travels. It, it said, it said uh, nobody, nobody ever got clever and, and, and wanted to do anything without God. I'm talking to somebody right now that, that, that you, you, you might be trying to get ahead of God to save yourself, right? Right, you're trying to save yourself. Uh, uh, you're trying to, you're trying to uh, 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 help yourself, whatever your fear is, whatever it is you think you're about to lose as a result of this pandemic, whatever it is you're trying to save. You need to make sure that you trust in God's guidance. Amen. Trusting God's guidance. And if you do that, uh, 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 you will see yourself winning more in the long run than getting ahead of God. You got to trust his guidance, it said that all of them trusted the guidance of God. This is how God was able to guide them through the wilderness and help them overcome those Moabites and Amorites and them Jebusites and them Canaanites, all them knights that they had to deal with on their way to the promised land. They were able to overcome nations who were stronger than them and had been fighting more than them, they were able to overcome those places and walk in victory because they did not move until the, the cloud of the Lord had lifted. And when the cloud of the Lord lifted, then they made their move. This is so critical uh, for you and I. I was thinking about Brother Gideon when I was thinking about this point about, about trusting God's guidance. Uh, when the Midianites came against God's people, uh, uh, God goes to, 
to, to, to, to Gideon, uh, 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 and he tells him uh, that he says he's a, he's a warrior, and, and he tells him that he's going to be the one uh, that's going to lead the people in battle. Uh, funny thing is that Brother Gideon said, how could that be when, when I'm from the weakest clan, he says, and, I'm, and I'm, I'm the weakest one, he says, in my family. And then he raised a question. He said, now, the Lord, if, you, if God is with us, why would he allow the Midianites, right, and the Amalekites, why would he allow these nations to come together to, to defeat his people if he's with us? And I know you're probably wondering if God is with us, you know, why did my family member die? And, you know, why, why did I lose my job in this pandemic? Why am I suffering if God is with us? Again, you have to trust God's guidance. Amen. When Gideon discovered that I need to trust the guidance of God, amen, to make sure Gideon didn't steal none of God's glory and none of God's praise. I think Gideon had 32,000 fighting men. He thought he had 32,000 fighting men. By the time God finished, amen, uh, cutting uh, Gideon's army, uh, he cut him down to 300, amen, fighting men, again, to go fight the Midianites. Now, now watch this now, because he trusted God, because he trusted God, because he believed God knew was best for him, the Bible said that he was able to, to celebrate in victory, that God gave him the victory because what? He trusted God's guidance, amen, in a time of his life that he was overwhelmed where he felt that he didn't have the muscle to get it done. He didn't think he had an army to get it done, but because God was with him and because he had the glory of God with him and he trusted God's guidance, God gave him the victory. What am I saying to you, St. John, that we got to do the same thing? We just got to trust God. We got to trust God's guidance. We got to we got to make sure that 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 we're following what God is up to and we're not following maybe things that we thought we wanted to do this year. I know myself for this year, my plans this year was to was to revisit the battle we've been having uh, out here with Leon Valley about our zoning case. I mean, my, my thing was to hopefully that they would vote some people off of the council on May the 2nd. And after that, in the summertime, revisit that thing and be done with the zoning before the fall and in the fall, be going after some money. Well, that wasn't God's plan because we not only did they move the election from May to, to November, then God allowed a pandemic to happen. He allowed Corona to show up. And so before Corona even showed up, he had already showed me by them moving that election that the things I had in mind is not what he had in mind for this year. Those were my plans and his plans is something else. And whenever God show you that your plans are not his plans, you don't want to rush God. You don't want to force your plans a, a, out there and, 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 and not pay any attention, amen, to the, to the climate, to what God is showing you. And so all I'm telling you is to trust God's guidance. If it means your plan going to take longer for it's fulfilled, then just go with that because the victory going to be sweeter when you get to that thing. It, it'll be a horror story for you and I to go against his will and his plan for our life, his church, his ministries, and to try to do our our own thing and so and so we have to trust the guidance of God we, we can't go we got to say look here make sure that the cloud been lifted reverend oh, Reverend, Reverend we ain't going nowhere reverend until the cloud is lifted off of the tent of meetings whenever God moved then we should move not always say at the church just like that here here it is here it is in closing in closing I want to share this last little thought with us and get out of your way uh, but the text says that, 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 so the cloud of the Lord was over the tabernacle by day and fire was in the cloud by night. Now this is taking us back, if you go back to Exodus chapter 14, when, 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 uh, when Pharaoh and, and, and his army was after them, uh, was when this, this pillow of a cloud uh, uh, shows up. And so this, this, this pillow of a cloud was over them, protected them at night. 
It was a fire, so at night it allowed them to travel and the enemy had to camp because they couldn't see their way, but God provided light for his people to travel even at night and so that they could see uh, uh, all around them. And then in the day, it was a cloud that covered them like shade so that you know, on a hot summer day, uh, they were still able to make good timing. And so, and so, so this, this text, this, this thought of this cloud shows up in Exodus chapter 14. But here it is here uh, 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 in chapter 40 is when he says, so the cloud of the Lord was over the tabernacle by day and fire was in that cloud by night. And it says, he says, in the sight of all the house of Israel doing all their travels. That, 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 that here it is, it is God's glory. His glory is a constant presence and protection. All right, that verse 38 is, 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 is telling you and I, when it comes to God watching over us, when it comes to God uh, being our helper, uh, uh, he's not a sometime God. Uh, uh, he, he's not the God who, who show up sometime and then sometime he won't. What, 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 what the Exodus writer is saying to us that, that the presence and the protection of God was a constant thing for the Israelites when they were traveling through the wilderness to the promised land. And, and, and I'm told that, 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 that God kept them, that God watched over them, that, that, that from, from the tent of meetings uh, uh, to Solomon's temple is 440 years. And so for 440 years, they trusted and believed in the God who what? Who dwelled, who was in this cloud that, that covered them in the daytime and covered them in the nighttime. Oh, I, that's a shout, y'all, to know that I have a God who covers me in the daytime and a God who covers me in the nighttime. And the Bible says, not only does it make us see the constant power or constant presence Amen. And protection of God. We see that 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 Moses want you and I to know that 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 God did it. He says it was in the sight of all the house of Israel. And so St. John, here it is. I want all of us to understand. I don't want just some of the members knowing that we have God's constant presence and protection. I want the whole church to realize that, that, that God is not only watching over, over my family, but he is watching over, yes, your family. That, that, that we, we, can, we can count on God being a constant presence and protection over our lives. Look, we can, we can sleep good at night, caught in the Psalms 121. He says, he says that the Lord never slumber nor sleep. And so, and so since God is going to be watching over us 24-7, uh, 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 the Bible teaching you and I that we got to learn how to praise God and thank God and, and get good rest at night knowing that God, yeah, that God is covering your life that God is watching over you. The Bible says that because he is with us, amen, that the Lord is a shade, amen, on our right hand. The Bible says that the sun wouldn't harm us in the day nor the moon at night. And so we have this presence of God with us, not some days, but each and every day. We, when we fast forward on this Sunday morning and think about Jesus Christ and how he came, how he lived and how he died and how he rose, what we have in Christ is an indwelling presence of God and the persons of the Holy Spirit that walks with us, that talks with us, what, that keep us clothe us in our right minds. We have nothing to fear in a pandemic because we have a God on our side who promised to never leave us nor forsake us. That's a hallelujah shout. That's a praise, St. John, that we have a God who's not just around sometime, but we have a God who is with us all the time and God is with us even now. He's with us 
even now. That's a praise. That's a hallelujah. Amen. That I have God on my side. I don't have to wait. Amen. On a check with the president name on it. I don't have to wait on what the Senate and the Congress going to do. The one person I'm waiting on and the one person I'm trusting in and depending on and leaning on. And that is the God Almighty. It's the God of the heaven and the earth. He is God, the father of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. That's the God who I'm trusting and leaning on and depending on in this pandemic. And because I know he lives, we can face tomorrow. I hope God has blessed you richly on this Sunday morning. I hope God has said something that blessed you real good. I hope it's drawing you closer to him. If you are with us here on the day and you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal savior, I want to give you an opportunity to receive him as Lord, as king of your life. The Bible teaches us that all of us have sinned. All of us have sinned. All of us have come short of the glory of God. The Bible says the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. And it's through one person, and that's Jesus Christ. And so if you have been listening today and you don't know him as Lord and Savior, here's what you got to do. You got to believe in your heart that Jesus Christ actually lived, that Jesus actually died, that Jesus actually rose from his grave, and that Jesus is alive. He's the king. He's seated at the right hand of God in heaven, and that Jesus one day is coming back to receive his church. Now, if you can believe that, you are saved. All you got to do is confess that and receive that, and salvation is yours. Amen. If you're looking here, if you're not here local in San Antonio and you're watching me this Sunday morning, hey, man, find a pastor, find a church, amen, that's preaching the Bible, that believe Jesus Christ is Lord, amen. That pastor will take it from there. They'll help you with baptism. They'll help you with your Christian growth and development. Let me encourage you to keep the faith, keep trusting God. St. John, never give up. Know that we are covered. Amen. By the glory of the Lord. God, we love you. We praise you. We thank you, God. We give you praise and glory even now. For it's in Jesus' name we pray and we do thank you. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Be blessed. Hope to see you soon. Hello, I'm Pastor Price of St. John Baptist Church. I want to just thank you for watching us today. I want to encourage you to be one of our subscribers. If you're not already one of our subscribers, please subscribe uh, to our Facebook page. Also, if you need more information about our church, uh, there's a link below that you can click on and learn more about St. John Baptist Church. Also, if you want to give and support the work of the Lord that we have us doing here in San Antonio, you can go to our website. Uh, we have PayPal there. We can, you can give and support the work of the Lord here in San Antonio. I'm so glad, again, that you took the time out to, to watch us, and we hope you come back, visit with us again. Be blessed.